achievement was John Carpenter's The Thing. What many consider the greatest monster movie of all time. Twelve men stationed in an Antarctica weather base find themselves under siege by a shape-shifting monster. It infiltrates the base disguised as a friendly husky. But this is a very bad dog. The creature effects were so mind-blowing and so outrageous because there were no rules to the monster. So the first time that the dog goes into the kennel and splits open and just starts turning into the... I didn't even know where to look or what to think. Special effects wizard Rob Bottin created an ever-changing monster. An alien shapeshifter that absorbed bits and pieces of life forms from around the galaxy and can imitate anything it touches. What's great about that film, The Creature Designs Anything, is the fact that it's trying to evolve in a very short period of time in each version. It's a bit of a mess. That's also what lends itself to being so horrifying, because if it came out as a fully resolved creature, I don't think that would have been anywhere near as scary as these mutations, that you felt the pain of it, even as an alien that's assimilating these people, you felt the pain that it's not quite figured out how to be um, fully resolved. Trapped in a nightmare, the men are consumed by fear and paranoia. Any one of them could be the monster in disguise. But it all kind of deals with uh, the fear of conformity, but also trusting people. I think that's a thing that a lot of people fear, you know? Trust is a tough thing to come by these days. The thing for a film that has some of the best monster effects of all time, even by today's standards, still the most tense scene revolves around them giving a blood test. You see, when a man bleeds, it's just tissue. Blood from one of you things won't obey when it's attacked. It seemed like a massive um, shape shifting monster in your lifetime, but everybody's cut their thumb. Everybody knows what that feels like. They're seeing who's the monster. And that's a beautiful analogy of, you know, life, like, you know, the banality of evil. You could, the monster could be sitting right here. Uh, Ted Bundy looked like a normal guy. Oh, no. The climax is in such a great shot where they're holding the Petri dish. So it wasn't until I watched it for the third time that I realized, oh, this is like a fake hand that he's holding. And the, it's a fake hand because a monster is going to go out of the Petri dish. We'll do you last. I've always been a big proponent of special effects that are practical. That happened on the set. And the thing that the chest that splits open really sort of amazed everybody standing around. As a result, you get a reaction, I think, from the, from the characters and the actors that is uh, a lot more significant than if they were just looking at a green object. For an aggressively violent film, the thing ends on a note of quiet paranoia. Two men about to die, neither one sure if the other is the monster. Won't last long, though. Neither will we. The thing is now considered a classic. But the film's horrific imagery did not go over well in 1982. Well, the thing had the unfortunate bad luck to come out right after E.T. And people were looking for lovable aliens, and they certainly didn't get any <laughs> in the thing. I just remember how devastated everybody was that the picture didn't, and not only did it didn't open, it got bad reviews. People are saying, you know, this is this is practically pornography. This is so violent.
obviously it stood the test of time and now you know people have a chance to appreciate it today the ever improving quality of digital